something. He's getting ready to command us to do something. I can recall even in my years as being a classroom teacher, I, I can recall standing before the students and sometimes things will be a little chaotic and a whole lot will be going on. And what I would do, I would stand up and I would say five, four, three, two, one. One And by the time I get down to one, I know that room better be absolutely silent. Well, there were times when I might have been in the middle of something and there might have been another student in the room that would stand up and say five, four, three, two, one. One, but the room didn't get quiet. And the room, the reason why the room did not get quiet is because that particular student or that particular person did not have the authority to get the room quiet. But because I was the authority figure in the classroom, I was able to get them quiet when I stood and made the mandate. So, so here we see in the text that, that Jesus is getting ready to say something profound and he's about to command to us to do something. So that's why he said all power in heaven and earth has been given to me. That's why he declares that. And who does he get his power from? Jesus got his power from his heavenly father. He got his power from God. Jesus did not just take on the role of having the power on, on his own and by himself, but God gave him that authority. And because God gave him that authority or that power or that exousia, then he had, he was in position to get everybody ready and get the disciples ready to command them to do something. So we see here that there is significance in Jesus's power, but not only is there significance in the power of Jesus, but watch this, there is a significance in Jesus's precept. This, we're gonna look at the significance of Jesus's precept. Now, 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 here it is, here it is in the text. All right, now, verse, verse, uh, verse 19, it says right here, it says, go therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So, so in the Greek text, in Matthew 28, verse 19, it begins with a participle literally having gone. But participles may sometimes be used in the imperative or the command sense. Therefore, it is not improper to render the term go in, as go in this passage. Therefore, Christ admonished his men, he admonished his disciples to go and make disciples. So we see here that this expression, church, is also a command. And the basic form of the word disciple is based, it means a learner, a, a pupil. And the word derived from this word derived from the root um, math or from the that comes from the word methetes indicates th thoughts accompanied by by endeavor. You didn't know you were going to get a little Greek lesson today. I'm trying to help us out. Now, let me go ahead and make this thing simple here. Now, now the part B of verse 19, Jesus commands us not only to make disciples, but watch this. He commands us to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So this clearly reveals that the baptism was humanly administered. Thus, this reference to immersion is not an allusion to some sort of spirit baptism. Now let me say something about that because many people claim to be spiritual. Many churches claim to be spiritual. They claim to have a, a, a spiritual type of, um, the church itself has like a spiritual type of uh, persona or thing going on. And sometimes you got to be really careful when people start talking about being spiritual because just because somebody says they're spiritual, it doesn't mean that they are engulfed with the Holy Spirit. Oh, somebody ought to say amen right there. All right. Now, because because many times, you know, uh, uh, when you ask somebody, well, uh, are, are you saved? Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? They might answer and say something like, well, I'm spiritual. Uh, I'm a spiritual person. I'm a spiritual being. And in some cases, that's a good thing. But my thing is, what kind of spirit are you talking about? 
And see, you got to be real careful because, and be, oh, you know, and then I, I remember having somebody uh, who we asked him, have you been baptized? I said, I've been baptized in the spirit. Now, I'm, I'm not talking about being baptized in the spirit. I'm talking about a water baptism. Have you been to the water? Have you been dunked under the water? And we, and, and, and in the Baptist church, we teach baptism by way of immersion. That means that I'm not going to bring you up here to the altar and sprinkle you with a little water. No. We're going to take you back here to the pool and we're going to dump you, un or not dump, but we're going to dump you under the water and bring you up because what that represents is you're being, you're, you're, you're dying to sin and you're being buried in a watery grave and you're being resurrected to new life. So that's the kind of baptism we talk about. So in the Baptist church, we're not sprinklers, we're dunkers. Can you say amen? So, so because that's how Jesus was baptized. Amen. John the Baptist did not sprinkle Jesus. John the Baptist took Jesus under the water. Go back and read your Bible. It's there, it's there, it's there. Go back and research it. Now, now watch this because verse 20, I'm still in my text here. In the A portion of verse 20, Jesus says that teaching them to observe all the things that I've commanded you. So we see here that not only does learning take, need to take place, but teaching also needs to take place. Did you get that? Not only does learning need to take place, but, but uh, uh, teaching needs to take place. And who does Jesus require to do the teaching? He requires us to do the teaching. The Holy, he is not going to send the Holy Spirit to do the teaching for us. No, we got to do some teaching. So, so as a disciple, not only are we commanded to do, so we're not only supposed to do, we're not only supposed to do learning, but we're also supposed to do some teaching. And many times we can't do a lot of teaching because we haven't done enough learning. So there has to be some learning and teaching taking place because you can't teach nobody if you're not a learner. Somebody ought to say amen right there. You can't teach anybody if you're not willing to be taught. You can't teach anybody if you're not going to come to Sunday school. You can't teach anybody if you're not going to be committed to Bible study. You can't teach anybody if you're not going to open the Bible and read and study the word of God for yourself. So in order to be a teacher, we've got to learn how to be learners. We got to learn to stay in the word and, and come to, to worship and come to Bible study. Be a part of the virtual worship experience, the virtual Sunday school experience, the virtual Bible study experience, because this is where the teaching takes place. And see, right now, I'm not necessarily doing a whole lot of preaching, but what I'm doing is doing some teaching. Somebody ought to say amen here. Amen. So, 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 you might not get any tuning up from this message. I don't want y'all to be mad. Y'all know I can hoop. Y'all know I can tune up. I ain't got to prove nothing to nobody right now, but this is the word that God told me to share with us today. Amen. Amen. Let's keep going. Let's keep going here because uh, uh, not only are we looking at the significance of Jesus' power, and not only are we looking at the Jesus precept, but we're also looking at the significance of Jesus' promise. The significance of Jesus' promise. Here it is in the text, verse 20, because we talked about teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you. But watch this. Jesus said, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, I want y'all to get that because I don't want to jump over that too quickly because, you know, the promise is enough to make us shout right there. But I want us, before we get to the shout, I need us to understand what the promise is saying. Let me read it again. It's right here in the Bible. It's right there in yours too, unless you tore it out. It says, and lo, I am with you always. Somebody say always. Always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Now, now, as I said earlier, every word here is empathetic because the ascension of Jesus Christ was at hand. And this implied an absence of his visible presence to be replaced by a spiritual presence, which is more perfect, potent, effectual, and infinite. So what Jesus is saying here is that I am with you in all of your prayers, public and private. I'm with you in all of your baptisms. I'm with you in all of your observances of Lord's Supper. I'm with you in all of your exhortations. I'm with you in all of your doctrine. And I'm also with you in all of your discipline. Watch this. Not every now and then, but I'm with you, he says, at all, all times, all 
all the days of your pilgrimage through all the dark days of trial and persecution and affliction that you may face what Jesus is saying here is that in the midst of everything I am with you so yes, I'm telling you to go and make disciples. Yes, I'm telling you to be a teacher. I'm telling you, I'm commanding you to be a learner. But watch this. The thing I like about Jesus is he doesn't leave you in there or leave you out there to drive by yourself. But he says that I'm right there with you. He said, I'm not going to leave you out to dry like man does sometimes. He says, I am right there with you. One of the things I cannot stand is when somebody who's an authority gives me an assignment and does not walk me through the process and how to complete the assignment. Has anybody ever had a supervisor that did that? Amen. Many, and as you know that you know we're trying to move the church virtual during this season, and, and I've been suggesting to the leaders at our church to start using something called Zoom. It's a video conferencing app that you can have on your phone or on your computer. Okay, and there are some people who don't necessarily know how to use it. So it is my responsibility as the teacher or as the leader to provide you with some sort, some sort of assistance in using the tool. I can't tell Deacon Ronnie to go and start a, a to have a men's meeting and use Zoom and not give him any kind of tools that's going to help him. Amen. And, and here Jesus tells us, he doesn't just tell us to go and make the disciples and doesn't give us what we need in order to help us to make disciples. He doesn't give the assignment and then disappear and there's nowhere to be found. Man, one of the things, I used to work for a boss one time that would tell me, all right, Davis, I need you to do this, that, and the other, and just walk off. And here I am sitting at my desk at my computer, one, okay, so you're telling me to do this, but I don't have any kind of instruction. Now, I don't, now I'm the type of person, I don't need you to stand over me the whole time and try to coach me through it like that. If you just give me the tools, if you give me the tools, I can get the assignment done. If you give me the instruction manuals, if you give me a job aid, if you give me, send me a YouTube link on how to get it done, I can get it done, but don't just leave me out there and don't give me no tools. Well, can I give you some good news about Jesus promise well yeah he gave us the promise but the thing I like about Jesus is he gave us the tool well what do you what is your tool preacher I tell you what the tool is the tool is the word of God and so you don't have to worry about not knowing what to do you don't have to worry about not knowing what to say you don't have to worry about not knowing how to respond because you have the tool right here in front of you I'm teaching better than y'all saying amen right now you you got the tool right there and because you have the tool you are able to do what Jesus commanded to do before he was taken up into heaven hallelujah now let me close by saying this I got to remind us that when Jesus gave the Great Commission he did not leave it up to us to decide whether we were gonna do it or not he did not leave it up to be uh, for a debate or a discussion. He did not leave it up for the church to say, well, I hear what Jesus said, but I think we need to have a board meeting and we need to take a vote on whether we're going to make disciples or not. Because according to the church bylaws, a, a vote got to take place and, and we got to make sure that, that the majority of the group is in agreement with what needs to be done. Now, again, I'm not talking about the board at Paradise. I'm talking about the board at some church across town. So I'm, I, want I don't want y'all to think I'm trying to throw shade in anybody but that's not what Jesus is saying it is not up for a debate it's not up for a discussion it's not up for a vote but we are commanded the Bible says to go out into the world and share with others the good news of Jesus Christ and that's all I'm trying to help us do today because I asked us the question earlier how can we make disciples and I'm closing with this how can we make disciples if we ourselves are not, uh, we're not equipped or we don't know what it means to be a real disciple. Because when I'm a real disciple, a real disciple uh, is not just satisfied with being saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and on our way to heaven anyhow. 
A real disciple is not just concerned with having some fire insurance. Those of y'all who don't know a fire insurance, that means you're not going to hell because you accepted Christ. See, 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 is that, is that, that's what the real disciple is not concerned about that. But, but I want us to understand that if we're going to be real disciples, according to Jesus Christ here, there are some things we're going to have to do. And there are times, and I'm a, hopefully I'll get a chance to talk about this later on, that there are times when discipleship costs. And I want us to understand something, church. And, and, and I was wondering why uh, God would have me to share uh, this matter of, of evangelism and discipleship in this type of setting. This is more of a Bible study type thing. But, but I have to be reminded that, you know what, this is the best opportunity we're in right now. This is the best place we're in right now because many of us see the problem was before is when we couldn't make disciples because, it's because we were too busy. We had so many things going on. Uh, we had all these crazy work hours. We didn't get home till 9 and 10 o'clock. And I know that there are so many essential employees. We have many who are a part of our church who are still going and driving into work. And we thank God and we appreciate you for all you do. But I also know that many of us are working from home and we're able to set our own hours and set our own daily schedule now. Why not put some time in there to do some discipleship training, some, not some discipleship, some, some getting to know folks. Yeah, you, I know you can't go to the restaurant and sit down with them, but yeah, you can send a text. You can have a, 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 a you can get on your phone. If you both have iPhones, you can do some FaceTiming. You can get on Zoom. Y'all do know that Zoom right now is unlimited. That means you can be, you don't have to limit yourself to 30 minutes. You can be in as long as you want to and just making disciples out of people. You can have a virtual uh, discipleship uh, meeting right there at your house. You don't have to wait for the church or the pastor to declare, okay, this is going to be discipleship day. We're going to go and we're going to get some people saved. No, that's something that you can set up and do on your own time. And I believe that this is a great opportunity. This is a great moment for us to make disciples because Jesus commands us. He says, go, go into all the world. You can right now, you can go into all the world and not even leave your house. Right now, uh, as we post this Facebook Live that we're doing right now, as we post everything on our YouTube channel, we're literally not just going into Houston, Texas. We can go into all the world. There might be somebody in a whole nother country that's gonna hear what we've shared today. Guess what? That's discipleship, and that's what Jesus commands us to do. And the people of God said, amen, amen. I'm going to extend the invitation at this time. Amen. We're just so, um, we just have to remember that that's what Jesus requires. Just go, and if the Lord says the same, we'll kind of get deeper into it on next Sunday. Now, now listen, church, and I want y'all to understand this, and I say this with all sincerity, as Marcus and Josh are getting ready at this time, I, and Mike, I mean, as, and Chris, I don't know where I got Mike from, Lord Jesus, but as, a, as, as we're preparing to extend the invitation, let me help you understand something. Amen. I know this was a different kind of message. I know that this is different, but you know, but but God just reveals me. Say, He said, I need you to, I need you to calm down for a second, and I need you to share some things with my people, and that's all I'm doing today. Amen. As you know, I, you know, I'm the type of preacher. Y'all know, I, I love, I love to preach. I love to hoop. I love to close the message out, and I love to tune up. I love for Marcus to get behind me and back me up when I'm ready to go ahead and close. But that's just not the direction God took me today. Amen. That's not the direction of God. Maybe, maybe in a couple of most Sundays we'll, we'll, we'll shout real good. But right now, and if you didn't shout last Sunday during Resurrection Sunday, go back and look at it again. You can shout all over again. Amen. But, but this is just, I want us to really fully understand making disciples because what good does it do if we come to church or we watch our church online and we're saying amen and we're touching our neighbor and we're high-fiving our friends and, and we're doing all these things and we're running around the living room three and four times, but yet we're not sharing Christ with anybody we just trying to get all we can can all we get and sit on the can but that's not what Jesus called us to he tells us to go and make disciples and you might be watching me right here right now and you might not have a relationship with Jesus Christ I want to invite you to get to know him amen what I want to do right now is I want you if you know that you're not saved I want you to bow your head with me right now and I want you to pray this prayer. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. And I want you to say it and I want you to mean it from your heart. Repeat after me. Say, Dear God in heaven, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. 
I repent of my sins and I turn away from them and I give my life to you. I believe that Jesus is your son, that he died for all my sins and that you raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus, I ask you that you, I ask that you would come into my life and save me, guide me, lead me, and teach me to live this Christian life. And right now, I receive you by faith as my Savior and my Lord. And I thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I give my life to you. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer with me, then I want to let you know that you are now saved. You are now part of the family of God. And the next plea I have for you all, if you are watching us today, you do not have a relationship. I mean, you do not have a church home. I invite you. You can unite with the Paradise Missionary Baptist Church. Is that possible to join a church virtually? Yes, it is. All you have to do, if you're bold enough, you can put it in the comments. Amen. Or you can go to info. You can email info at paradisembc.org and say, I would like to unite with Paradise Missionary Baptist Church and we'll get you connected. Amen. We had someone join our church just last night via email. Amen. Amen. So it, it can be done. Amen. So I'm going to give you a few moments right there while you are making your decision. I'm going to give Josh a moment to come and minister to us in song. Then we're going to prepare to receive our tithes and our offering. And I have a few announcements to share and then we're going to be done for the day. Amen. Amen. We offer Christ to Oh, my brother, we offer Christ to you. Oh, my sister, he will give you brand new life, new life abundantly. to accept or reject. Amen. Amen. Before we close out for today, I want you all to get ready to bring your tithe or to, uh, to go online and give your tithe and your offering today. Amen. Amen. As you all know that God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. So I encourage you, first of all, I want to talk to the membership of Paradise Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. You already know, we talk about this every week, how we are required, how God commands us, amen, in his word to bring the tithe and the offering. Amen. So that when we do that and when we obey his word we know that he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing one to where we don't have room enough to receive and I don't know about you all but I believe the word of God and I trust the word of God and I know that he's if he says it is true and I'm a witness that God will come through on his promise every time when we obey him and we bring him his tithe and his offering amen as we as we say all the time you might say well pastor uh, this is not my week to tithe that's all right that's
that's all right if you just give sow a seed of at least $25 just give a, a liberal offering $25 if you want to add more to that that's fine amen because we know that you know we are still to be even though we're not in the building amen God still expects us to be good stewards of his resources and as you know the church still has to go on amen the lights still have to stay on because what we don't want is for you all to come back to church and our business is not taken care of so we got to handle God's business amen now I might be a little messy when I say this I know some of y'all got them stimulus checks amen I know some of y'all still waiting on yours. I know some of y'all got those stimulus checks. Amen. Well, Pastor, do I have to tithe off my stimulus check? I'm going to let you answer that question on your own. But in case you don't know the answer to it, yes, you do. Amen. Yes, we have to tithe off of our stimulus checks. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. As thank God, you know, my wife is she's already taken care of our tithe from our stimulus check. Amen. So praise God for that. Now, what you do with the rest of it, that's totally up to you. The thing I like about God is He only wants 10%. The 90, you can do whatever you want to do with it. Amen. But just don't, you know, don't brothers, don't go buy too many, don't or don't go online and order too many suits. Because I know right now they're talking about drive up retail. I don't trust none of that because my body is built too funny. Amen. I need to try stuff on and make sure it look right before I go buying stuff. Amen. Sisters, don't spend all your money on bundles. Amen. Amen. I just, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to help somebody today. Amen. Amen. While you're preparing your offering and your tithe, amen, uh, just a few uh, announcements I need to make. I know our announcement, um, usually Sister uh, Keisha Hall does our announcements, but you know, we're having to kind of adjust because we're in a different kind of situation right now, but there are a few announcements announcements that, um, that have come across my desk that I need to share with you all. Uh, first of all, this Tuesday, amen, uh, April 21st at 6 p.m., our youth ministry, our swag ministry will be having a virtual Zoom meeting, amen. So uh, Sister Tasha Kelly and Sister Ty McHenry uh, have really been given leadership to that during this time that Sister Shatrina Charles has been uh, just, you know, she's in a season of bereavement. We want to continue to keep her in prayer, amen, but she's still working, amen, but we've just, we're giving Given her time because uh, anyone who's ever lost a spouse, you know uh, that sometimes you know it takes time and your you know your focus is really not where it needs to be. So we want to keep her in prayer, but we thank God for people who are willing to step up and be an assistance to her during this time. Amen. So you should be uh, parents. You'll be getting an a invite. We'll share that information with you. We're not going to put it on the public Facebook page because children are involved. Amen. So we're going to get that information to you uh, in the best way we know how. Uh, also, look forward to you all being in Bible study with us this Wednesday. We've had a great time in Bible study. I've enjoyed just sharing God's word. We've had a lot of fun in Bible study. Amen. Amen. Just exciting to continue to still share the word with you each Wednesday on the Facebook page at 7 o'clock uh, p.m. Amen. Also, uh, our men's ministry is going to have a Zoom meeting this Thursday at 7 o'clock. Amen. We're going to get that information to the brothers. Amen. Because we want the brothers to have, we have not had our meeting for the month of April. So we want to make sure that we take care of our monthly meeting for April. Amen. Amen. Our women's ministry is having their Zoom meeting this Saturday, April 25th at 10 o'clock a.m. There's going to be a new book that's going to be ordered for the sisters. That uh, information will be coming soon on that. We'll let you know as soon as we receive it. So uh, uh, I know the sisters are going to be truly excited about that. Um, and also uh, where our pastor's aid uh, is going to be meeting soon uh, via Zoom. We'll get you information for that as well. We're trying to do it one day this week. Got to finalize some things. But of course, we're going to let you all know. And I believe there was an invite that went out uh, from our pastor's aid uh, uh, Vice President, I believe, Sister Kim Ashley, amen. If you would, uh, Pastor Zaid, if you are listening to me, watching me now, please respond to that text. Please respond to that message. And it's so important, church, it's so important, especially members of Paradise. I'm really talking to you right now. It's so important that when messages go out from a departmental leader or from our church administrator that requires a response, that we need you all to respond and respond promptly because this helps us to set our schedule. Right now, nobody's coming to the building right now. 
so this is our only means of, of communicating and staying connected. So it's important that we reply to these messages and we accept these meeting requests and everything so we will be adequately prepared to share with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I believe that's all I have. And again, uh, hopefully by now you uh, are prepared to give. Now don't forget, we have info at Paradise. In I'm sorry. No, that's the email. Uh, of course, we have the t uh, text give. It's in the description of this Facebook Live. Uh, text that number. Text give to that number. You can give that way. Or you can just go to the website if that's what you're so comfortable, if you're comfortable with that, go ahead and give via the website and just click on online giving. Or if you're just old school and say, I'd rather drop it off to the church, I'd rather do some other kind of way, email info at paradisembc.org and we will make arrangements for you, or uh, make arrangements to receive the tithe and offering from you there. Amen. Well, that is all we have. It's been a great day. I'm so excited. Thank y'all for sharing with us. We're going to go ahead and we're going to be dismissed. I'm going to pray a prayer of benediction and, uh, and I'm going to release you to enjoy the rest of your day. Oh God, that you would bless us indeed, that you would enlarge our territory, that your hand will be upon us and that you keep us from all evil. God, grant unto us grace, peace, and mercy as we prepare to either go to our various destinations or spend time with our families. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, amen. Amen. Paradise 2020 on three. One, two, three. Paradise 2020. God bless you. I'll see you Wednesday night in Bible study. Bless y'all, man. Thank y'all so much. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Uh, give me some crystal. Yeah. All right. So, Chris, we got uh, some chicks. All right. That's I wanted to put my iPad up there, too, okay. just to try to... Make sure you disinfect it. Yeah, in case you put my hand. Then make sure you disinfect that as I take it in my hands. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Okay. Um, Everybody's good. I'm not watching it.